Well, good morning, Saints. This is uh, Brother Mike back on my Sunday morning podcast at nine o'clock Pacific and Arizona time. It's noon on the East Coast. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm Brother Mike. I'm the uh, counselor at the Arizona Deliverance Center for HardcoreChristianity.com in Central Phoenix. We're on 15th Avenue, just south of Osborne Road. It's the red brick building. And uh, you remember, we have two live services every week, Thursday and Friday nights at 7 o'clock, Arizona and Pacific time. We have preaching, teaching, healing, and deliverance at both those services, and they're both recorded live on our YouTube teaching channel, plus two or three others. Just go to youtube.com slash House of Healing AZ. And you're there every Thursday and Friday night. Brother Rick brings the message on Thursday nights. That's our best service of the week for deliverances. Really fantastic. Also, remember that we have two live healing and deliverance the Zoom services every week. Tuesday nights is for the ladies only with Julie and the hardcore ministry team. And Wednesday nights is for men and women, Brother Rick and uh, Stephanie and the other ministry team members are killing it on wednesday nights just fantastic julie's zoom is growing every week so it's really been um, very encouraging to see this happen so if you need help you can show up live or you can show up on the zoom or you could send me an email mike at hardcorechristianity.com and i will send you the id and the password for the zoom services and i will send you The miracle list. The miracle list is probably the greatest treasure known to America that nobody knows about. I send out dozens of these miracle lists every week, and only a fraction of the people actually do them. But the ones that do them, their lives are catastrophically changed. The miracle list. I'll send it to you as soon as you send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com. The government's uh, brought ready to come out with a new virus, and then we're going to have to have another vaccine. So if you need a religious exemption form for that fiasco, send me an email at mike at hardcorechristianity.com, and I'll send you out a religious exemption form, A-S-A-P. And thank you for your support. Yesterday, uh, at the Carlsbad Deliverance Seminar, it was absolutely fantastic Uh, as far as i know only three people got mad at me and uh that's not bad we had 40 or so people there so three out of that many is uh, better than my normal average Uh, so if you assume there were double that amount uh that you know there were others that got mad at me and didn't say anything so that's only six so yesterday was fantastic we had a bunch of good healings we had several deliverances, Julie and Ann and uh, uh, Renju, Jennifer, uh, they came over here and uh, bailed me out and they did a fantastic job yesterday. It is really, really great. Uh, I wanted to share one healing yesterday that was very interesting. I was working with a uh, young couple, a husband and wife, and uh, both of them, um, good looking people, um intelligent very likable and nice personalities and uh he was suffering from procrastination and she had this strange odd pain in her stomach and it had it it seemed to me like she said she'd had it for years and uh she was a very gentle loving kind person and she uh wasn't living in any kind of sin, had a great character, you know, just a very strong woman of God. And him too, a really beautiful couple. And uh, she couldn't get this thing out of her stomach. Well, we started to pray and I asked her to join in and I saw that she had a coward spirit. Okay. Now the Bible says, when Paul talked to Timothy, he said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, right? And you know the rest of the verse. Everybody has it memorized. You have power, you have love, you have a sound mind. Now, 
the Greek word for power there is in that verse is dunamis, which means supernatural power. When you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside, you have you have supernatural power that comes from him. And he's in your spirit, man. And the Holy Spirit only gives people a sound mind. Sophronismus is the Greek word. It means uh, a mind that operates properly, correctly, fundamentally sound. That's what it means. And it says love. Agape is the Greek word for love. And that is the love of Christ transferred into your spirit, man, by the Holy Ghost. Everything you get in your ministry and in your Christian life from now to the day you die comes from the Lord Jesus through the Holy Ghost, and he implants it inside of you. That's how their system works, right? Well, this girl had that verse. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Well, that verse was a little mistranslated in the King James Bible. It wasn't the regular Greek word for fear, which is phobos. It was the Greek word dalia, which means cowardice. And that, those are the demons that cause people to be shy, introverted, withdrawn emotionally. And it usually gets in, the, the coward spirits usually get in, in childhood, during periods of, of abuse or bullying in school, where a child is embarrassed or humiliated, and they develop this kind of sense of internal fear and fear of conflict. They have a fear of public speaking. They have a fear of standing up for themselves. They have a fear of speaking out, okay? It's a Dalia spirit. It's a coward spirit, okay? Well, God just made me that way, Brother Mike. Uh, no, he didn't, okay? You heard the verse. God has not given you a spirit of cowardice. You have divine agape love. What, you know what that is? Of course you do. It's a love that comes from God implanted in your spirit, man, by the Holy Ghost. And it's supernatural, unconditional love so that you can love people that are unlovable. So you can love yourself. That's the toughest one. The person that you are is the toughest person to love. But supernatural power of God, agape, allows you to do that. Okay? Well, this girl had a fear spirit from childhood. She was coward. She was cowardly. And I noticed when she was praying, she was praying kind of gently and softly. She kind of prays like this, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. And I bind this spirit in the name of Jesus. And I said, and I, said I stopped her and I said, hey, this isn't going to work. And this is, you're not good. We're not getting this thing out. All right. You, you need to do as Paul said to Timothy, we need a warrior spirit here, not some spirit of cowardice that's going to keep you in bondage. Okay. Fear and cowardice are two demons that always work together. Here's how it works. They both usually get in childhood. And then the fear spirits, the ones that gives you the spook, <sighs> boom. The coward spirit is the one that causes you to become withdrawn and not seek help. You become withdrawn and you don't seek help. That's a coward spirit. The other feature of the coward spirit is what this woman had at the service yesterday. She won't fight for her life. She was more apt to fight for her other people's lives or people she loved. She was much better at that. But fighting for her life, not on the table. It's not going to happen. She's going to pray just like I was praying. I command this spirit to come out in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm, I, no, stop. Stop. Okay. That's not how you do it. <clears throat> okay. We must learn to do it as Jesus did it, okay? Jesus was the greatest at, at everything, period. And that means he was the world's greatest deliverance minister. No questions asked, no doubt about it. What did he do? 
he firmly, aggressively spoke directly to the demons. And he said, I charge you, come out of the boy and never enter into him again, Mark chapter 9. Jesus was aggressive with demons. No nonsense. He bashed them right in the face, kicked them in the groin, shoved them out of the airplane with no parachute. Vicious. Vicious. Praying doesn't work with demons. Jesus never prayed over demons. He blasted them. He blasted them. So she was praying and she wasn't doing a very good job. So then I recruited her husband. I had him start commanding with her. And that, that helped. That was a little better. He was a little stronger. Okay. Well, I had to go pray for somebody else, as you can imagine. It was chaotic around the altar call time. So I went to go see somebody else. Well, about 15 minutes later or so, she comes walking up to me with tears in her eyes. I mean, it was beautiful. She was really a beautiful woman. She had a great personality, very good heart, ten, very tender person, super gal, sanctified, not, not living in any kind of sin at all. Sin was not the problem at all. And she's got tears in her eyes. She says, this is what happened to me. And she's kind of started to explain it. And she was kind of broken and so on. But apparently what this demon had done after she started to attack it, after she started to do as Jesus did, as Jesus taught her, I charge you. She became aggressive, fighting for her own life. And you're, you're supposed to do that. You're supposed to fight for your own life. God wants you to do it. He loves it when you do that. This thing came out of her stomach and went down her right leg and out. And she was amazed. Well, I was working with another woman there who... Uh, was um, you know, a long-term project and she wasn't getting delivered and her mind was blocking all kinds of stuff and she was doing very poorly. But she did get some minor breakthrough though. So she, some good things did happen to her and she brought two friends with her to the service and they were very helpful too. They kept, they understood everything I was saying. They understood deliverance and they were trying to encourage her to receive truth and. Uh, get better. Well, I had this woman give her testimony to that woman about how this spirit had come out of her stomach and how she had stepped up and fought for herself and bang, it came out. Say, And that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. And your heavenly father gets very proud of you when you do that. He's very proud of you, very similar to when you were proud of your, your son or your daughter, right? I remember when I was in junior high, I started my boxing career in California. I'm from Anaheim. Right now, I'm podcast coming to you from Oceanside. We were in Carlsbad yesterday, and uh, unfortunately, I got to go back to Phoenix. I guess it's 118 there today. Good grief. When I was in junior high, I... One of my boxing matches on my, our boxing team was putting on an exhibition at the Elk Club in Anaheim. And I remember I fought in that fought in that fight. I won a little trophy. I still have that little trophy today. It's about that big. I still have it. Don't say anything. But after that fight, I didn't do very well. And my dad was so proud of me. I'll never forget that. My dad was so proud of me. I just thought that was the most wonderful thing in the world. Well, I said that to say this. Your heavenly father is that way and way beyond it, way beyond anything my dad had, obviously. He's very proud of you when you fight back, when you become a fighter. See? When you cast out that spirit of cowardness and you say, this isn't the way God built me. I'm just naturally shy. Okay, cut the crap. Stop lying and fight back. Okay? How do you fight back? You call a demon's name, 
names. You dirty, stinking, rotten rats. No, you don't do that. You, f you fight back with God's word. You fight back with genuine faith and assurance. You got this thing covered and the Holy Ghost has got your back. The key to deliverance and everything else in your life from this day forward is getting the Holy Ghost to show up. He's the, he's the difference maker. He's the difference maker. I want to do something a little different today. Yesterday's service was, uh, there were several people who had some really good questions. And they were very helpful. And I thought I would do that today. If you have a question, just pop it up on the screen here. And uh, we'll take a shot at exploring it. Because yesterday's questions uh, were very good. Uh, the people that got mad at me in the service yesterday was over the subject I taught on last Sunday. I don't know if you remember that, but it, well, maybe it was the Sunday before. It was called Another Jesus. I taught on Another Jesus. There's a fake Jesus out there. And Paul explained it perfectly. And there's a fake gospel out there. There's a fake Holy Spirit out there. Okay, and I was trying to explain to the people uh, where these fake Holy Spirit demons come from, how they manifest, how you can recognize them, how you can get on their trail. And I, I went through the usual stuff, you know, glory clouds, trips to heaven, trips to hell, gold dust, you know, angel feathers, uh, there, there's all kinds of, the demons are mixing, they're mixing up. Demons are like big league pitchers, okay? They're not like little league pitchers where you only got one pitch. Maybe the kid's got a fastball. Maybe he's got a change up. And that's about all, all the kid uses. No, in the big leagues, you can't come up there with one or two pitches. You need a range of pitches that are solid to be able to last in, in major league baseball, okay? Probably the greatest pitcher that ever lived was the great Nolan Ryan from Texas. This guy uh, was absolutely ridiculous. He struck out so many people, nobody else can believe it. I mean, talking about nobody who plays Major League Baseball can believe it. You look at Nolan Ryan's statistics and your mouth drops out. He, he um, you know, he's hard to compare himself to other pitchers because... There wasn't anybody to compare him to. Well, demons are very similar to Nolan Ryan. They not only have a blistering 103 fastball, they've got all kinds of pitches, knuckleballs, change-ups, everything coming at you. Well, the Holy Ghost knows everything about that and infinitely more, and he is the difference maker. The Holy Ghost is a difference maker. And you've got to be able to generate or allow the Spirit of God to move in order to get things accomplished. And so that these other spirits, this other Jesus, this other gospel that Paul was talking about to the Corinthians and Galatians, this is the thing trying to block the moving of the real Holy Spirit because when he shows up, the demons get their faces kicked in. But the key to getting him to show up is your genuine, true faith in Christ and your assurance and your confidence that what the Bible says is actually the truth. And you have no doubts and no unbelief. That's the key to it. When you have that, boom, the Holy Ghost shows and he shows up huge. He shows up big. He showed up yesterday, thank, very thankfully, at our altar call in Carlsbad yesterday. It was, it was fa fantastic. Okay, here's a question. Um, does it matter? Does it matter if you say in the name of Jesus or in the name of Jesus Christ? No, it does not. Um, that phrase, in the name of Jesus, uh, is, a, is a phrase that, uh, legalism absorbed and they use it all the time in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus doesn't do any good unless you have genuine faith behind it what it actually means is 
by the authority of, in the name of Jesus, through the authority of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You do not have to say that little phrase with everything you do. You do not have to say that. I've had dozens of people healed over the years where I just said, heal, and, or I grabbed their body part, be healed, something like that. They got healed. It's not, it's not your legalistic pet phrases that generate the moving of the spirit. It's your genuine faith in Christ, the living Christ. Jesus, the King of King and Lord of Lord. Okay. Here's another question. Uh, uh, people have are going to heaven and hell. Is that a spirit? Yeah, that's a familiar spirit. He, he gives them a vivid, I'm telling you, reality like you can't believe. Familiar spirits uh, are the most powerful of all demons. They're the smartest of all demons. In the book of Revelation, they take over the planet for the false prophet. Familiar spirits are... Uh, the demons that run all the world religions. They run all the church denominations. They run Christianity in America. Uh, they run the mega churches. They have witchcraft, voodoo, uh, you name it, occult, new age. Uh, I don't want to keep going, but all the spiritual things in, in the world are run by familiar spirits. They're, they're the worst ones. And uh, they also, when they get in your body, they start giving the person terminal illnesses. And for some reason, they like love cancer and arthritis. And I don't exactly know why that is. But anyway, what the devil is doing, he's sending in these, uh, it's, most of it's in the charismatic or prophetic movement. They have this, they're going to heaven, then they're going to hell. It's all a distraction. It's all nuts. Stay away from it. Do not get involved. With it, okay. To give you an idea how silly this is, I was watching the Elijah list one day, and the Elijah list and the Sid Roth are the two worst offenders of spreading familiar spirits in churches in the United States. Um, the guy that runs Elijah Elijah's list is a really great guy. Uh, Sid Ross, a really good person. He's, he's, he cares. I mean, he's legit. He's a good man of God. Elijah, this guy, uh, he's a great man of God. They, they've been deceived by familiar spirits because we are playing checkers and the familiar spirits, they play chess. I mean, the gap of intelligence between a human being and familiar spirits is, it's embarrassing. It's huge. Okay? That's why we have to have the Holy Ghost, because when we use him and rely on him, we are way beyond any familiar spirit and any other demon that coughs it face up in your life. The Holy Ghost is, is the difference maker. He is he demand, as they say on the street. And the demons, and it says right in James, the demons, they believe and they tremble. Well, that's the manifest presence of the Holy Ghost. They start trembling. Happened yesterday at the Carlsbad service. I was talking to some lady about uh, about glory clouds, and a spirit manifested in her stomach, and told her that I was I I was a fraud, and she she had red flags about me. This thing actually moved; she could feel it moving in her stomach. Another lady's hands gnarled up like this. Severe. Have you ever seen severe rheumatoid arthritis? during her deliverance yesterday. I mean, they just, just like that. And this is a witchcraft thing when your hands curl up in the knots, some form of witchcraft. She got healed. Those are, those are spirits, okay? So steer completely away from these familiar spirit visions and dreams. Uh, the lady I was watching on Elisha list had taken a trip to heaven. She goes there every week. And one, on one trip, she went to an area of heaven where Santa was riding around with the reindeers. Rudolph was there. And Santa goes around and gives toys to children. The guy on Elijah List, really great guy. No discernment of any kind. Never caught him. 
and and God is is screaming at these prophetics. Hey, grave soaking, Todd Bentley. Look, I'm exposing this for you. Glory clouds, laughing and cheering and doing cartwheels over glory clouds. The Hebrew word is kabon. The glory of God descended in the temple. People were crushed. They had to get out of the temple because the glory of God was so powerful and so convictive. Okay. Yeah, the legendary British evangelist Smith Wigglesworth had a prayer meeting one morning on one of his evangelistic trips. Everybody showed up. All the ministers for the crusade showed up. And Wigglesworth sat on the stood on the platform and he was standing up there leading the leading the praise. And he was going like this with his hand. He was moving it back and forth. And uh Kabod, the glory of God started to fall. Okay. And people started to leave the room. It was so powerful. And as the glory increased, people leaving the room would increase. They couldn't stand it. They were broken. They were humble. They were in awe, reverence. And at the end of the prayer meeting, nobody was left except Wigglesworth. He was standing up there by himself, praising, praising God. <laughs> there it is. In in uh, the prophetic movement, when the glory called falls, glory cloud. It's actually a satanic manifestation. Everybody's fooled, and they're all doing cartwheels. They're laughing. They're jumping. The hysterical laughter, cheering, clapping, like somebody won the Super Bowl. Yeah. So. All that stuff is a manifestation of familiar spirits. That's how powerful they are. They have only begun to warm up on this planet. The false prophet is only a few years away now, and he is off the chain. He is the most evil, wicked person that ever lived, worse than Nimrod, worse than Nimrod. And his supernatural power is off the chain. Unbelievable. He's going to fool everyone and set the whole planet up for the antichrist that's how powerful he is he's going to use artificial intelligence and deep fakes he creates a statue greek word is icon he creates a statue of the antichrist and it starts moving it starts talking friends it's already happening there's deep fakes all over the place you can see this thing coming can't you Somebody calls you up and it's your friend and they're talking to you. You'd swear it's your friend. It's a deep fake voice. I watched a video on Barack Obama not too long ago. And I mean to tell you, he was saying the stupidest things you've ever heard in your life. No way Barack Obama would ever say any of that stuff. It was, it was a parody. It was a joke. He sounded and looked exactly like Barack Obama. I mean, we live in a world now of monumental fakes. And that's... Familiar spirits, that's their specialty. That's their specialty. Okay. Um, I want to caution you about deliverance now. As I mentioned before, this um, movie came out, biggest thing that ever hit deliverance in the United States. Locke uh, had this movie and it was spectacular. It had all these people getting delivered. Uh, God bless the movie. The anointing was there. At the end of the movie, people were getting delivered left and right in the theaters. Felt kind of sorry for the theater managers, not really sorry, but kind of sorry because there were a lot of people puking in the theaters. So they had some extra cleanup that day, but it was a good thing. The problem is that deliverance is now the flavor of the month, but God showed me that it's going to fizzle out. It's going to go like this. And the only people left are going to be people like me who do biblical deliverance, which is keeping it based around repentance. You can blow demons out of people at the mall or out in a park, and that looks sensational. You can film it and put it on YouTube or put it on your Facebook page, what have you, Instagram. But the demons always come back, Matthew 12, Luke 11, and these people don't have any defenses. They have not been discipleized. 
I made that term up. And the demons get right back in. So you got all these people that they look like they're a big deal to people and they're blowing demons out of people, but they're actually making people worse. If you cast people, demons out of people and you don't give them repentance, if you don't disciple them in some way, you have you are going to damage that person. You're going to damage that person. And they're going to get worse. Yes, they are. They're going to get worse. They're going to get worse. Okay, is there any other questions? I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, no, do not go to heaven. Might as well add this. Um, I've studied near-death experiences for years. And uh, they pretty much, they're pretty much similar. Uh, somebody's like on the operating table. And they, they die or they're near death. And suddenly they have an out-of-body experience. Their inner man goes up above their body. And usually they can look down on their body and they can see the room they were in. And then they sense this feeling of euphoria and peace and love and gentleness. And then they see a light. And then they see a tunnel. And they go down that tunnel. If that ever happens to you, do not go down that tunnel and do not go to that light. It's a trick. And okay, go back in your body. Go back in there. You go to that light, it drops off into hell. You go through the light, boop, and it drops right off. The whole thing is a deep fake. Don't do it. Go back in your body. Okay? Stay in your body. And turn your heart over to the Lord. That's that's the best way to do it. And then when you die, your guardian angel escorts you to heaven. He takes you there. He's been with you your whole whole life. He's been following you around your entire Christian life. When you die, he takes you to heaven. You go with him. You go with him. You do not go through a tunnel and fall off into hell going into some light that feels good. Oh, it's so warm and fuzzy. I feel love. I feel peace. Do not do that. Do not do that. Those people did not make it to heaven. They drifted off into the abyss. Okay? Please do not do that. It's extremely dangerous. And again, this is the world of familiar spirits. It's, it's not just magic. It's, it's real. They are real. Okay? They give real sicknesses and real illnesses. They love cancer for some reason. A lot of Christians, particularly in the charismatic and prophetic movements, come down with cancer. Okay? They come down with cancer. Second warning I want to give you, I've mentioned this before, please be careful about getting around people who advertise themselves as prophets and apostles. Yeah, that is very, very dangerous. That's a marketing ploy to give the person some kind of instant out-the-door credibility. And that is not how it's done. That is not the way to do it. Apostle Paul did the opposite. He only defended his apostleship when he was being challenged on it. Other than that, he saw himself as a servant and mentioned that several times. Once again, the legendary British evangelist Wigglesworth was asked one time, uh, what, kind of, what kind of gifts do you have? You have a bunch of spiritual gifts. Wigglesworth said, it's not for me to say whether I have a spiritual gift or not. If the gift manifests, then that means I have it. If it doesn't manifest, then I don't have it. You see, people that are truly filled with the Spirit and who don't have familiar spirits in their brain, and that's how it works. The Holy Spirit lives in your spirit, man. The familiar spirits are in your brain, giving you these visions, trips to heaven, all this weird stuff. That's how it works. That's exactly how it works. The demons in the brain tell the person, hey, you're an apostle. You're a prophet. Okay. Well, listen, what about Brother Mike? What about me? What am I? Well, Brother Mike, you're an apostle. I am? Yeah. You've had thousands of people delivered from demons. You've had hundreds of people healed. You're an apostle. Listen, I'm not an apostle. I'm not a pop 
prophet. Uh, I'm a regular person, just like you, a normal man, and I'm trying to do my best. And I got my flaws and faults. Some of them came out at the seminar yesterday. Some people criticized me at the seminar, and you know, they, they were right. I mean, you know, I don't exactly have the nicest presentation, but no. Okay. A real apostle was defined by the apostle Paul to the Corinthians, what, a, what an apostle is. These prophets that are running around the country, they're not, they're not prophets. They have impressions in their spirit, man, and they just give impressions. I have a word from you from God. The Lord says, and then it falls out of their mouth like old dentures. Please don't get sucked into any of that. Please don't do it. All right, that's a red flag. If somebody has to tell you they're an apostle, you're in trouble. Because if Paul and Wigglesworth didn't do it, but everybody knew they were apostles, that's how it's done. That's how it's done. <laughs> that's how you do it. Yeah, you don't go around tooting your own horn. Okay. If you're an apostle, trust me, people will know it with, with you in the building within 10 minutes. They're going to see the signs and wonders, the miracles, the supernatural events. That's what an apostle is. Not these kooks on TV and these whack jobs on YouTube. They are self-appointed, self-proclaiming apostles. <clears throat> and you fall into that trap, you're going to get screwed, blued, and tattooed in that order. You're going to end up deceived. You're going to end up deceived. All right. Uh, yeah, laying on of hands. You got to be very careful with laying on of hands. Paul warned Timothy of that. Okay, you can be a partaker of somebody else's sins. It's called transfer spirits. If I have a spirit of lust and I put my hands on you in a spiritual setting, okay, boom, I can transfer a lust demon into your body. I can transfer it in there. If i am got witchcraft demons and I used to be heavily involved in the occult or new age, and now I'm a Christian, now I'm a born-again, spirit-filled Christian, but I didn't finish my deliverance, and I still have familiar spirits in my brain and the Holy Spirit in my spirit. Man. If that's the case, and I put my hands on you, I can transfer some kind of a new age or witchcraft-type spirit into your body. Okay? Have you ever been subject to a transfer? Okay, Usually a occurs through sexual intercourse. If you've had adultery or you committed fornication or you experimented with your sexuality and you had same sex activity some night or you went to a prostitute, you saw a whore, something like that, you paid for oral sex, whatever you did when you were young and drunk or whatever you did when you were young and on meth, particularly meth, meth causes lust demons to go steroid berserk. Uh, if you did that when you were young, you picked up transfers, the demons transferred into your body. And later on, you might have gotten saved or you were backslidden. You came back to the Lord and you got, a, you know, you got the Holy Ghost, you know, filling you again. Right. And you're feeling better. That's not good enough. Some of those demons go dormant and they hide in your body. If you come back to the Lord, they go dormant because they want to attack you later and trying to get you, get you to backslide. But if you pick up a transfer spirit, you will, you will start having symptoms of it. You'll ha start having things like uh, nightmares or repetitive bad dreams. You're going to start having uh, strange sensations in your body. Uh, you're going to have, you start having pains in your body that move around. The shoulder pain moved down to my lats. Oh, and now it's in my L4-5. Moving, floating pain is a red flag. You may have picked up a transfer. If you, if you had sex with somebody and you, you made a mistake and you slipped and you picked up a transfer, you'll notice a change in your sexuality. Your, your sex drive will go up uh, or your sex drive will go boom, crash to nothing. 
depending on your circumstances and how the spirits are attacking you. So if you were a promiscuous person years ago, when you, before you got saved, you've got to get all those spirits out, not just the obvious ones that are active, but the ones that went dormant, that only manifest at certain times to take advantage of you under certain circumstances, usually periods of trauma or elevated stress. When you're going through elevated stress or trauma in your life, those dormant spirits will launch and they'll attack you. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to tip the scales back to failure, backsliding, loneliness, depression, self-hatred, low self-esteem, rejection. They're trying to trigger those sensations that they are giving you. They are giving them to you. And you picked them up when you were involved in sin. You went out and got drunk. You went out and had some immorality, whatever it was. You got in a vicious fight. You went through a period of screaming and cursing. Something transferred in. Or you're sitting in church and some prophet or apostle comes by, lays their hands on you, and boom, you're hit. Uh, short story. I had a beautiful woman on my ministry team uh, a couple of years ago. And she caught on to deliverance very quickly and was doing a, just a great job. Well, it's kind of a long story, but um, I helped set her up in her Zoom ministry. And then I, you know, released her from our ministry. And then she went out on her own, on her Zoom ministry. But before that, after she had gone through del deliverance and had been doing some wonderful deliverances at the, at the, uh, at Hardcore, uh, she went to a service one time with her husband. She went to see um, some prophet. And at the end of the service, this prophet said, uh, who wants to come down to the front for prayer, come down to the altar for a blessing or whatever it was? Well, her husband took a look at this guy, had red flags, and he left. He went out in the lobby. And this woman that was on my ministry team didn't get the red flags went down to the altar, he put his hands on her head, and boom, she hit the floor and picked up a rack of transfers you would not even believe. It took a few days and hours of deliverance per day to get those spirits out of that woman. She didn't even catch it. Her husband, who was not in deliverance and was not a very spiritual person, had gut checks and red flags over this guy and went into the lobby. But she, the spiritual leader of the family, and the one who was on my ministry team doing deliverances, didn't catch any of it, went down to the front and picked up a rack of transfers. Now, fortunately, you know, all the demons were later cast out. But the point I'm trying to make is, man, you got to be careful. You know, be careful. In the prophetic movement, they spread familiar spirits around like you can't believe. I mean, they hand them out like candy. They do it through what they what they call um, fire tunnels. And everybody goes down this tunnel, and you have all these other prophetics and charismatics on either side putting their hands on them and speaking words over them and downloading blessings and all kinds of stuff. What they're doing there is they're transferring spirits into these people. And you'll see people coming down the fire tunnel. This, this one's not doing nothing. They're just walking down there like nothing's happening. The one behind them is going through all kinds of manifest gyrations, uh, vibrating like a tuning fork, all kinds of weird stuff. Nobody sees that as a spirit. Nobody, nobody catches it. They think it's God. It's complete spiritual insanity. And by the time you get to the end of the fire tunnel, you will have picked up more demons than you had before you went in the beginning of the fire tunnel. Yeah? You don't know people in a fire tunnel putting their hands on you. You don't know that person from Adam. You don't know anything about it. They could have been on porn last night. They could they could be on porn the day before they put their hands on you. 
you know, be careful. Paul, Paul warned Timothy, be careful. Watch out. You cannot trust everybody. If somebody puts their hands on you, hey, you have to know something about that person. You got to examine their fruit. That's what Jesus said. By their fruits, you will know them. And you examine them by their spiritual fruit, not their behavioral fruit. It's their spiritual fruit Jesus was talking about. Because religious people can appear to be incredibly sanctified and, and remarkably holy, behaviorally. No, you have to have discernment. You have to have discernment and see what they're like and what they're about. That, that's the key. And again, that takes time. It takes prayer. It takes knowledge of the word. And it takes experience. Okay? Never forget this. You cannot replace experience with knowledge. Okay, you could have 50 degrees and be absolutely useless. And in, in fact, let me let me tell you the truth. These people with master's degrees and doctor of divinity degrees, these people are virtually useless when it comes to meeting real people's needs. Real people's needs. Okay? I have more education than most people do. I have a bachelor's degree. I have a master's degree. Uh, I took those two degrees when I got in the ministry, walked over to my trash can in my office, threw them in the trash. I threw them in the trash. Why? Because I'm, I'm looking for miracles. I want people to get healed. Childlike faith. Childlike faith triggers miracles, not degrees, not knowledge, not human intelligence. See, your IQ isn't the determining factor. It's your childlike faith. Two issues to pray for. Lord Jesus, please give me childlike faith and love. Listen, if, if you get that prayer answered, you're going to become a very dangerous poor person. You're going to become a spiritual killer. You're going to put the devil to run. You, you're not going to believe the beating you're going to heap on him. But you get a bunch of college degrees. I got a divinity degree and church history and biblical studies and Hebrew, I was like, forget about it. Think about it. So think about what I just said. If you were, if you, if you, if you were dying of cancer, would you, would you want to go get prayed for by a Bible scholar or somebody's grandmother who spent, who has knees that are worn out at the altar? Are you crazy? Have you lost your mind? I wouldn't even go drive by a Bible scholar. I'd go right to grandma. Grandma, can you pray for me? I'll get healed. You go to a Bible scholar with two doctor of divinity degree? <laughs> You're kidding, really? Seriously? These guys are useless. They're worthless. They couldn't pray their way out of a wet paper bag. They take you, they can do a great job explaining the bag. They go into detail about bags. Okay, you don't need a bag dearest you need a miracle from god you know how you get that love childlike faith that's your prayer that's what you're looking for thank you for coming to the service yesterday we had some really good healings we had a lot of good deliverances thanks to the ministry team again i'm in oceanside and i'm getting ready to leave for the heat and I hope my air conditioner is working. All right. Thank you for your prayers and thank you for your donations. I'll be back ministering at the Deliverance Center Friday. Oh, man, I got a good one for you. And don't forget about the Deliverance training class Saturday. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. That will also be broadcast. Uh, Kelly will be back in town. She's been in Colorado for a few days. She'll be back in town and she'll be taping that and we'll put it online for you. Okay. I love you. Thank you for loving us.